South African paraglider Ooh. has made the first legal flight off Mount Everest. I'm so happy that Pierre Carter from South Africa is joining me to tell us about that jump. Pierre, oh my goodness, what was that like? Well, uh, Linda, it was. Um, it's very hard to describe it, but it, you know, it was it was just amazing and and a dream for me that's uh, come true and that I've been working for on and on for a, a very long time. I was really, really pleased that we managed to pull it off because doing something like that, the odds are, are really all against you. Give us a visual. I mean, I'm just kind of imagining this, soaring from this incredible mountain that Edmund Hillary was the first guy to go up. What did you see? What was it like? What is the air like? Because there's no air up there, is there? It's a takeoff to get airborne. That's the, the tricky part. I wasn't allowed to take off from the very, very top of the mountain. The authorities wouldn't let me. So we took off from 8,000 meters in the South Coal. I mean, it's just beautiful. The mountains around there are just beautiful, and, and Nepal's a very beautiful country. And the mountains are so much bigger. You know, I've flown in the Alps, and I've flown in the Andes, and uh, in South America. And so I've flown, I've been privileged to fly all over the world. And uh, I must say, these mountains are just on, an, on another level. I've been trying to fly off the seventh summit, the highest mountain on, on the seven continents. Yeah. The Everest was number six. Even though Denali, I didn't fly off because um, they wouldn't let me. But uh, and I don't think they ever will let me. But, yeah. And you've done Kilimanjaro. What are the others? I've done Kilimanjaro, Aconcagua in South America. So Kilimanjaro, I've got a little company and we take people flying off Kilimanjaro now. Okay. And that, that took us 10 years to get that permit. And we sort of ironed the way for people to now fly off Kilimanjaro and we set up the rules for the Tanzanian government and everything. And then... Uh, there's Ulbris in Russia, which is the highest in in Europe, in the Ural Mountains. Yeah. There's Aconcagua in South America. There's obviously Everest in Asia. There's Papua New Guinea uh, has got uh, Carson's Pyramid. And that's a little peak that sticks up above the jungle. Very nice little event for that. And then um, there's the one in Antarctica, which is uh, Mount Vincent, which is the last one I've still got to do. You know spring chicken. Where does the nerve come from for somebody that's 55 years old to do all this? It's just incredible. Uh, it's taken me 10 years to get this far. So I've been doing sort of one every one and a half to two years I go and do a mountain. Yeah, and I know well, I've been sort of climbing, I guess, all my life. But, uh, you know, it just becomes a way of life. So I've been flying for 34 years and climbing since I was, I don't know, 15, 16 years old. So it's, yeah. And it's just a beautiful way to see the world. So after Mount Everest, you need more adventure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's amazing what the, the mind forgets all the bad, you know, the sort of stuff that you didn't like and just remembers all the good stuff and that you, you crave that again. Now, I think South Africans are a bit, uh, they've got that pioneering, you know, it's a pioneering country, I guess, it was it would have been from runs in the blood. Well, at least that's over.